Hello, welcome to our channel Learn Mechanical Engineering. In yesterday class, we have seen what is movement and how to find out the direction of the movement. In today's class, we will see what is Varignon's theorem and solve few problems under the topic of Varignon's theorem. Now, what is Varignon's theorem? Varignon's theorem statement is moment of a force about any point, moment of a force about any point is equal to sum of the moments of the component of that force is equal to sum of the moment of the component of that force about the same point is equal to sum of the moment of the component of that force about the same point so this is the statement of varignon's theorem moment of a force about any point is equal to sum of the moment of the component of that forces about the same point is called varignon's theorem so to prove this theorem consider a force R acting in the plane of your body as shown in figure. Consider the force R is acting in the plane of the body as shown in the figure. The forces P and Q, the forces P and Q represents the two non the forces P and Q represents the two non-rectangular components of this force R. So the two non-rectangular components of this force R is P and Q. Now, the moment of this force R about the point O, we know that R into small r into capital R. So, capital R is the force, small r is the perpendicular distance. The moment of this force R, capital R about the point O is the small r into cross product of capital R. And since this capital R is equal to P plus Q, this capital R is equal to sum of these rectangular components, non rectangular components P and Q. So R can be written as P plus Q. R is nothing but P plus Q. If moment of this force capital R about the point O is small r cross capital R means, then we can write small r cross capital R is equal to small r into p plus q since r is equal to p plus q we know that r is equal to p plus q small r cross capital r is equal to small r cross p plus q and now using the distributive law of cross product we can write moment of moment about this point o is equal to moment of this force capital r about the point o is equal to small r cross product of capital r is equal to we can use the distributive law of cross product and expand this as small r cross product of capital P plus small r cross product of capital Q, which says that the moment of R about O, the moment of R about O equals the sum of the moment about O is equal to the sum of the moment of these two forces about O of its components P and Q. So this proves the theorem. So the moment of the capital R force about the point O is equal to sum of the moments of these two non-rectangular components forces about the same point O. So this proves the theorem. And Varignan's theorem need not be restricted to the case of two components. So this Varignan's theorem need not be restricted only for this two component of force. But it applies equally well for three or more forces also. So this Varignan's theorem can be applied for more than Two forces that is three and more forces mainly in coplanar non concurrent force system this varignan's theorem will be used for locating the resultant force in the rigid body so this varignan's theorem will be mainly used in coplanar non concurrent system of force to locate the resultant force in the rigid body so next we will solve a simple problem using varignan's theorem so here is the description of the problem a bar ABC carrying a force of 20 Newton downward force at point A and 30 Newton upward force at point B and 40 Newton downward force at point C. So a bar ABC is acted upon by a 20 Newton force, 20 Newton downward force at point A, 30 Newton upward force at point B and 40 Newton downward force at point C. Compute the resultant force. Compute the resultant of this three coplanar non-concurrent system of forces and locate its position 
with respect to point A and locate the position with respect to point A. So for location of the resultant force with respect to point A only, we have to use Verinard's theorem. And the distance between the point A, B is 6 meter and distance between the two points B and C is 8 meter. So now you need to replace this three parallel system of forces acting on a bar A, B, C by a single resultant force and you need to locate that resultant force with respect to point A such that which will produce same effect as that of these three parallel forces. So we know that the formula for finding out the resultant force is sum of the force along x square plus sum of the force along y square. The same formula which we follow for concurrent system of forces. <coughs> so first we will sum the forces along x. Since the bar AB is purely acted upon by only vertical forces, the sum of the forces along x is 0. Next we will sum the forces along y. So 20 Newton is acting in downward direction of y axis, so minus 20. 30 Newton is acting in the upward direction of y axis plus 30 and this 40 Newton is acting in the downward direction of y axis so minus 40. So 30 minus 40 minus 20 will be giving a value of minus 30 Newton. So sum of the forces along y is minus 30 Newton. So substitute these two in resultant formula you will be getting 0 square plus 30 square which is equal to 30 Newton. So now you can replace this three force by a single force of magnitude 30 Newton and what is the direction of this resultant force so the direction of the resultant force we can conclude from the the sum of the force along x and sum of the force along y since sum of the force along x is 0 so this resultant force is going to be purely vertical force whether this resultant force 30 Newton will be acting in upward direction or downward direction can be identified from this sign of the sum of the force along y so sign of the sum of the force along y is negative means this resultant force 30 Newton will be acting in the vertically downward direction. So resultant force is acting vertically downward. So now answer for your first question. Compute the magnitude of resultant force. The magnitude of resultant force is 30 Newton and direction is vertically downward. And the second question is locate its position with respect to point A. So for this to locate the resultant force with respect to point A only you need to go for Varignan's theorem. So what is Varignan's theorem? So now only we have studied that resultant force moment about a point is equal to sum of the component force moment about the same point. Resultant force moment about a point is equal to sum of the component force moment about the same point. We call it as Varignan's theorem and we will use this Varignan's theorem to find out the location of that resultant force with respect to point A. So now draw this bar ABC separately and we have calculated the resultant force of these three parallel forces as 30 Newton and it will be acting vertically downward direction and in the question they have said that find out the location of this resultant force of 30 kilo Newton which is acting in the downward direction. Find out its location with respect to point A. So we don't know this distance x. So I am assuming this resultant force 30 Newton which is acting in the vertically downward direction is acting at a distance of x from point A. So I am blindly assuming to the right side point of A and it is acting at a distance of X. So, but we know the magnitude is 30 Newton and direction is downward direction. So this you locate here at a distance of X. So now according to Varignan's theorem, what is resultant force moment about this point A? So resultant force. So for to find out the direction of the moment, you assume yourself, you are standing in the line of action of this resultant force facing yourself towards this arrowhead. So if you are facing yourself towards the arrowhead and if you are standing in the line of action of this force means your momentum point will be right side of you. So the momentum point will be right side of you if you are, if you are assuming yourself standing in the line of action of this resultant force facing towards the arrowhead. So your momentum point will be in the right side. So momentum point is in the right side means clockwise moment. So clockwise moment means plus and we know that moment is nothing but force into perpendicular distance. So force 30 perpendicular distance is x. So r into x. So this is the resultant force moment about the point A is equal to sum of the individual force moment about the same point A. 
So next, you have to equate this resultant force moment about the point A is equal to sum of the individual force moment about the same point A. So that is called Varignon's theorem. So now we will write the sum of the individual force moment about the same point A. And we have the sign convention is for clockwise moment, we should take positive sign and for anti-clockwise moment, you should take negative sign. So now I am going to moment take moment of all these three forces about the point A. So what is moment of this 20 Newton about the point A? So the moment of this 20 Newton force, which is acting in the vertically downward direction about the point A will be zero. Why zero means we know that for moment to happen, there should be some perpendicular distance. If there is, if a force is vertical means there should be some horizontal distance for the moment to take place. Since this 20 Newton force and point A is lying in the same plane of action, this 20 Newton force will not have any moment about the point A. So 20 into 0 will be 0. So this 20 Newton will not come in our equation. So for the moment to happen, there should be some perpendicular distance. If the force is vertical means there should be some horizontal distance. And if the force is horizontal means there should be some vertical distance. So if there is no distance between the force and the momentum point means then moment of that force about that same point will be zero. So you need not consider this 20 Newton in our moment equation. So now come to the second force 30 Newton. So 30 Newton is vertical force. So vertical force means it should be having some horizontal distance with respect to momentum point. So the horizontal perpendicular distance is 6 meter. Force is 30 Newton. So moment is 30 into 6 and to find out the direction of the moment you assume yourself you are standing in the line of action of this 30 Newton and if you are standing in the line of action of this 30 Newton facing towards this arrowhead means your momentum point will be on the left side. So if the momentum point is on the left side means the direction is anti-clockwise. So direction is anti-clockwise. So the anti-clockwise means minus. So minus 30 into 6 meter plus and this fat now we will move on to this 40 newton force and this 40 newton force is also a vertical force so for vertical force that should be some perpendicular horizontal distance so 6 plus 8 14 so moment is 40 40 into 14 40 into 14 vertical force into horizontal distance is 40 into 14 and to find out the direction of this 40 newton force Assume yourself standing in the line of action of this force facing towards this arrow head. And if you are facing towards this arrow head means. So the momentum point A will be towards your right side. So the first, if you are facing towards this arrow head and standing in the line of action of this force means your momentum point A will be towards your right side. So if the momentum point is towards your right side means then the rotation will be clockwise. So for clockwise, it is plus sign. So 40 into 14. So if you are simplifying this equation means 380 Newton meter. Always remember that the unit of moment is Newton meter. Since it is force into distance, the unit of momentum, sorry, the unit of moment will be Newton meter. If you are simplifying this equation means you'll be getting 380 Newton meter. So this is sum of the individual force moment about the same point A. So now substitute this sum of the individual force moment about the same point A which is equal to 380 and moment of this resultant force about the same point A is R into X that is R we have calculated as 30 substitute that here. So you will be getting X equal to 380 by 30 which is equal to 12.666 meter. So you need if you are locating a vertical downward force of 30 Newton at a distance of 12.666 meter from point A means it will produce the same effect as that of these three parallel forces. Hence, Varignon's theorem is mainly used for locating the resultant force in the given rigid body. So next we will solve one more problem using Varignon's theorem. So here is the description of the problem. Four coplanar non concurrent forces four coplanar non concurrent forces non concurrent forces means forces line of action will not meeting at a single point so four coplanar non concurrent system of forces which is equal to 2 kilo newton 3 kilo newton 5 kilo newton and 7 kilo newton are acting on a square plate or acting on a square plate having sides equal to 1 meter so acting on a square plate having sides equal to 
one meter as shown in the figure. So determine the magnitude, direction, and position of the single resultant force with respect to point A. So you need to replace this four force by a single resultant force, and you need to calculate that magnitude, direction, and position that single resultant force with respect to point A, which will produce the same effect as that of this four forces. So for that position only, you'll be we are going to use the Varignon's theorem. And now, as usual, the first step in solving the problem means if there are any inclined force means, resolve that inclined force into rectangular, horizontal, and vertical component. So at point A, a two kilonewton force is acting at an angle of 30 degree with respect to the horizontal component means horizontal component will be cos, vertical component will be sine. So two cos 30, vertical component will be two sine 30. And at point C, an inclined force of 5 kN, inclined at an angle of 60 degree to the horizontal is acting. So the horizontal component will be cos, vertical component will be sine. So horizontal component is 5 cos 60 and vertical component is 5 sine 60. So first step, we have resolved the two inclined forces into rectangular components. So now next step, we need to find out the resultant of these four planar non-concurrent system of forces. The formula for finding out the resultant is sum of the force along x square plus sum of the force along y square. So for that, first we will sum the forces along x-axis. That is parallel to forces acting parallel to x-axis. At point A, 2 cos 30 is acting in positive of x-axis. So plus 2 cos 30. At point B, there is no horizontal forces. At point C, 5 cos 60 is acting in negative of x-axis. So minus 5 cos 60. And at point D, 7 kN is acting in positive of x axis, so plus 7. So plus 7 minus 5 cos 60 plus 2 cos 30 will be giving you a value of 6.23 kN. Similarly, sum, we will sum the forces that are acting parallel to y axis. At point A, 2 sin 30 is acting in positive of y axis, so plus 2 sin 30. At point B, 3 kN is acting in negative of y axis, so minus 3. And at point C, 5 sin 60 is acting in positive of y axis, so plus 5 sin 60, and at point D, there is no y axis forces. So, if you are simplifying this equation, means you will be getting sum of the force along y is 2.33 kN. So, now substitute these two values in the resultant formula, you will be getting resultant force is equal to 6.65 kN. So, now you can replace this four force by a single resultant force whose magnitude is 6.65 kN. And next step, we need to find out the direction of this resultant force. So for to find out the direction of the resultant force, we know that theta equal to tan inverse of modulus of sum of the force along y divided by sum of the force along x. So sum of the force along y is 2.33, sum of the force along x is 6.23. For substituting, that means we will be getting direction theta is equal to 20.5 degree. So now you can replace this four force by a single force of 6.65 kN on direction. 20.5 degree with respect to horizontal and next step you need to locate this resultant force with this direction with respect to point E. So for that you should go for Varignon's theorem. So we know that what is Varignon's theorem? Resultant force moment about a point is equal to sum of the component force moment about the same point that is Varignon's theorem. Resultant force moment about a point is equal to sum of the individual component force moment about the same point. So that is called as Varignon's theorem. So with respect with this Varignon's theorem, we can locate the resultant force moment about the point E. So now we will draw redraw the square plate separately for to locate the resultant force with respect to point A. So redraw your square plate separately with point A and we have calculated resultant force magnitude is 6.65 kN, direction is 20.5 degree and it will be acting in which quadrant, whether it will be acting in first quadrant or second quadrant or third quadrant or fourth quadrant. So for to find out that quadrant, we need to see the sign convention of sum of the force along X and sum of the force along Y. So our sum of the force along X is positive, sum of the force along Y is also positive, that is component of this resultant force, sum of the force along x is positive. Vertical component of this resultant force, sum of the force along y is also positive. So sum of the force along x positive, sum of the force along 
y is also positive means its composition resultant force also will be acting in first quadrant outward direction so our resultant force is going to be acting in the first quadrant outward direction at an angle of 20.5 degree with horizontal magnitude 6.65 kilo newton since some of the force along x is positive and some of the force along y is positive resultant force will be acting in first quadrant outward direction with magnitude 6.65 kilo newton and direction 20.5 degree so now you can you can apply this resultant force in our square plate in the same direction at an angle of 20.5 degree with respect to horizontal magnitude 6.65 kilo newton the only thing is we don't know the distance we don't know this perpendicular distance with respect to point a so i am plainly assuming at some distance of this x and at some distance of this y and at some distance of x i am assuming this resultant force is acting at a distance of x from the point a in the same direction as we have identified theta equal to 20.5 degree and magnitude 6.5 Six five kilo newton. So I don't know this distance x. I am assuming it is acting at this point, and I have located here. And next to find out this distance x, we will apply Lamis. Sorry, we will apply Varignon's theorem. So what is Varignon's theorem? Resultant force moment about a point is equal to sum of the individual component force moment about the same point. So resultant force moment about the point is equal to sum of the individual forces moment about the same point is called as Varignon's theorem. So what is resultant force moment about the point? So resultant force magnitude is 6.65 and perpendicular distance is x. So 6.65 into x is the resultant force moment about the point. And next we will find out the individual force, individual component force moment about the same point A. So for to substitute here, next we will find out the individual sum of the individual component force moment about the same point A. So sum of the individual force moment about the point A is equal to, as I already told you that, at point A, the two component force moment with respect to same point A will be equal to zero. Since this forces acting from this point A to kilo newton does not have any distance with respect to point A, then this two kilo newton or component of this two kilo newton force will not have any moment about the same point A since there is no any perpendicular distance. So this two kilo newton will not be coming in our moment equation, moment equation. So next we will take moment of this three kilo newton force with respect to point A. So the moment the force is vertical force the distance horizontal distance is 1 meter so 3 into 1 is the moment and to, fi to find out the direction if you are assuming yourself standing in this line of action of this 3 kilo newton along the direction of this arrowhead means your momentum point will be in the right side so if the momentum point is in the right side means clockwise rotation so clockwise rotation means plus 3 into 1 so next we will come to this 7 kilo newton force moment about the point a so this 7 kilo newton is horizontal force for horizontal force there should be some vertical distance so vertical distance is this 1 meter so moment is 7 into 1 so moment is 7 into 1 you assume yourself you are standing in the line of action of this lying in the line of action of this 7 kilo newton force facing towards this arrowhead and if you are facing towards this arrowhead and standing in lying in the line of action of this force means your momentum point A will be towards your left side. So if the momentum point A is towards your left side means rotation will be anti-clockwise moment. So rotation will be anti-clockwise moment. So if it is anti-clockwise moment means minus 7 into 1. So next we will take the moment of this phi sin 60 force with respect to point A. So this phi sin 60 is vertical force. So for vertical force, there should be some horizontal perpendicular distance. The horizontal perpendicular distance between this point A and this vertical force is 1 meter. So phi sin 60 into 1 meter. So phi sin 60 into 1 meter. So for to find out the direction, we will assume ourselves to be standing in the line of action of this force facing towards this arrowhead. And if we are facing towards this arrowhead and we are lying in the, we are standing in this line of action of the force means our momentum point A will be 
on the left side. So the momentum point is on the left side means the rotation will be anti-clockwise rotation. So if it is anti-clockwise rotation means it is minus. So minus 5 sin, 5 sin 60 into 1. So next we will take the final force moment about the same point A, 5 cos 60. So 5 cos 60 is horizontal force. So for horizontal force there should be some vertical distance. So vertical distance is 1 meter. AD is 1 meter. So 5 cos 60 into 1. So 5 cos 60 into 1. And to, far, to find out the direction we will assume ourselves to be lying on the line of action of this 5 cos 60 force and facing towards this arrowhead. So if you are lying in this line of action of this 5 cos 60 force facing towards this arrowhead means our momentum point A will be on the right side. So momentum point A is lying on the right side. So if it is lying on the right side means the rotation will be clockwise. So clockwise means plus. So plus 5 cos 60 into 1. So this is the equation of individual component force moment about the point A. Why this 2 kN component force is not coming in this equation means this 2 kN force does not have any distance with respect to point E. So it is not coming in the equation. All other forces will be coming in this equation since all other forces are having some horizontal and vertical perpendicular distance. So if you are simplifying this equation means you will be getting minus 5.83 kN meter. So this minus sign indicates anti-clockwise moment. So minus 5.83 83 kilo newton meter now substitute this sum of the individual component force moment about point a is minus 5.83 and we know that resultant force moment about the point a is r into x and what is direction of this resultant force moment about the point a you assume yourself you are standing in the line of action of this resultant force facing towards this arrowhead and if you are facing towards this arrowhead and if you are lying in the sign of action means your momentum point A is lying on your left side so the rotation will be anti-clockwise hence it is minus 6.65 into x so minus 6.65 into x so this minus sign and minus sign will be getting cancelled and finally we will be getting x equal to 0.88 meter so if you are <coughs> positioning or locating the resultant force at a distance of 0.88 meter from point A in this direction of 20.5 degree with respect to horizontal and magnitude 6.6265 kN means this resultant force will produce the same effect as that of this non-concurrent coplanar forces.